You have any aces, bub? No. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Overview. Today, we're going to take a little look at the Metacom Mafex Marvel X-Men Gambit. Now, we've had our ups and downs with Mafex. I remember back in the day getting C-3PO and Superman and absolutely hating it, swearing off the line, to hell with Metacom. But since then, they've upped their game. They've put out a lot of fantastic action figures. There's still QC issues here and there, some odd choices, but for the most part, I've enjoyed everything I've gotten. Looking at the packages, what we're used to seeing with this line, a lot of graphics thrown at a box. Very comic book corner up here showing off Gambit. Pretty promotional picture. Gambit, Mafex, Marvel, Metacom. Window showing you most of what you get. I was worried for a second because when I took it out of the shipping box, the head was flopping around. And I thought, this is the one that sours me. Ah. But no, if you look close, the dumbbell's still there. The head's just not popped on. On the side, pretty promotional shot of Gambit, Mafex number 131. On the back, more pretty promotional shots showing you what the figure can do. Some accessories, alternate heads. Creepy bear's back. On the other side, different promotional shot. Gambit X-Men up on top, some window. On the bottom, warnings, choking hazard, small parts. Don't put the pretty plastic in your mouth. That sticker that says, hey, I'm not a knockoff. Anyway, let's get this open. <laughs> See what's going on here. Ooh. The bottom tray has the big effects. And it's not just the figure stand, there's also a smaller stand to hold up those big effects. Fairly basic stand, the Metacom stuff is usually loose out of the package, but there are screws that you can use to tighten them up. Much better. I haven't got everything out yet, but there's this Y and this taller Y. Maybe there's not an actual peg hole in the effects piece, it just sits up in the crook of that. Oh, moment of truth, head flopping around in there. Plastic protective pieces to keep the paint from chipping in the package. Not a problem. Pops on. Crisis averted. It's just more Mofex mutant goodness. That's all I got to say about that. Go home. But really, it just captures the essence of Gambit. Or at least how I remember him from the comics. He's just that dashing character, swoops in, footloose, fancy free. All that is captured in this figure. And this is the whole presentation. Most of the time, at least the way I remember him, the jacket was on. But I like that Metacom gave us the option to take it off. It's not swappable arms. It's just a nice, soft, really nicely detailed jacket. But we'll get to that. We're going to look at the figure first. And to do that, we have to take the jacket off. And there's a look at the figure itself. The arms do seem slightly thin, but I think they did that so it wouldn't be too bulky with the jacket on. In case you wanted to display him like this, they gave you all the detail you need to do that. The rings around the shoulder joint coming down to these sculpted lines on here, and that's the same on the legs too. Those aren't just painted on, they have little edges etched into the body. Same for his signature collar piece. It matches the tubing around here and it comes down and around and it has that weird whatever hell kind of design that is. And then you run right into what is seemingly an armor piece in the comics, but it's his full musculature. You can see abs, you can see pecs, you can see everything. And then at the waist you have that same matching tubing to I guess signify that this is a chest plate of some kind. I don't know, but it goes all the way around the back. You can see all the back muscles. Then pants, those are some kind of cloth or some kind of unstable molecules, whatever they're going to use in the comics. Some slight wrinkles in places, but <laughs> again, if you're this confident, then you're going to show off your leg muscles too. Ba -bow, rah, 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 all the right grooves. And you have the armor plates coming down in that just iconic design that you remember with Gambit. Remy needed some knee pads that were attached to that. I don't know how these work, but it comes down to the feet. Same design, running all the way to the toe joint. I have the LeBeau gloves where it's just the two middle fingers covered, the rest are uncovered. These didn't make much sense. They were just cool looking. The black plastic has kind of a sheen to it because it is plastic itself, but I love how metallic the magenta and then the light blue silver of the armor plates are. Just look how the light dances off each muscle and it goes in different directions. You don't lose the detail in it, but it's also super shiny. That is a fine line to walk whenever you're making these decisions for action figures. Again, that beautiful, just blue steel design that should not work in the real world, but it works perfectly in comic book world because you also have this half mask that doesn't really cover. It doesn't hide his 
identity. He has his face sticking out. He has his ears sticking out. He has his hair sticking out the top. It's just a way to tie the costume all the way to the top of the skull. At this point, you don't even question it. And nobody's hair works like this unless you're wearing one of these, apparently. Love the five o'clock shadow. It's just another thing that Gambit always had. He's just rough and rugged. The red eyes pop out at me, though. It looks good, but in the comics, I always seem to remember him having just red pupils and then what should be white was black. For all his handsome attributes and features, you looked in his eyes and you kind of thought, oh, this guy's trouble. Wish that was a little bit more detailed here. That and I worry about this. It seems to be cast in that pinkish plastic. Is this going to scrape off? This being paint on top of the black plastic. And then the same down here. Although this seems to be, is it painted blue or is it painted black right here? And that works right into one of my other pet peeves, the knee pad being attached to the lower leg. I understand why they did it. If this had been on the kneecap itself, it would have split across here. But as is, it, it doesn't look right. It's not terrible. It could be sticking out way further, right, Amazing Yamaguchi? Uh, yeah. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. It has a crook in it, and whichever direction you point that is giving you more distance in that direction. Does that make sense? If you have it pointing back, he's going to look up more. So I usually leave these in this position, but you can turn it if you want more forward or side or something. Then there is a ball at the bottom of the neck. Can look up, looks down, and that's even with that one piece angled to the back. So that's why I leave it in that position. But my favorite, look at that, so much tilt. He can touch his ear to his shoulder. And then side to side, essentially any direction you want him to look, he's going to look that way. Seems to be a peg on a ball joint going down into the torso and then up into a ball joint in the shoulder itself, and then this cover piece to hide it all. Because it works like a dumbbell joint with some forward, some back, some up, some down. Rotates all the way around on top of that and then hinges up to there. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes all the way up. Swivel hinge, swivel at the wrist. So swivel, of course, on both sides. And then the hinge, you can turn in any direction you want to. Dumbbell joint at the mid torso, ball joint at the waist. Crunches way forward, way back. So much tilt. Look at that. Rotation. Oh, very tight. Crotch piece is a little bit rubbery to get out of the way, but there is a drop down joint at the hip. Forward, back, out. Oh, better than most Spider-Mans. Rotation at the thigh. Double knee comes to here. It doesn't go all the way but it's still pretty far. Same as the wrist, swivel, hinge, swivel at the ankle. That gives you rotation at the top. Hinges back, hinges forward. Forward facing pin for rocker, but you can also turn that hinge for some mega tilt. And then a toe joint goes all the way up. For accessories, Gambit comes with the full array of hands. He comes with two fists, comes with two staff holding hands. There's two card holding hands. There's two relaxed hands, two splayed out hands, and then two splayed out hands that have pegs for the big honking effects. Like most effects, easy enough to pull the hands off. There's not a huge mushroom peg to it. It's mostly just friction. And then I still love that they're doing these sprues for the matching hands. If you're like me and throw these in a Ziploc bag, then you can keep all the hands together. Plus, it keeps the hole at the right size when they're in the package or manufactured or shipping to you, whatever. And just take that and boom. Done. Now I said staff holding hand, of course you're gonna need a staff. And it is finished in that same bright blue silver tint. Then there's these two power effects. And those will have holes in them that plug onto the ends of the staff. So you can have the kinetic energy just flowing through doing whatever you want. It's a gambit. You gotta have some card throwing effects too, or at least some cards charging up, getting ready to be thrown. Like the effects for the staff, it's a nice translucent pink material. But you know what I'm gonna gripe about? There's no playing card detail on the card. I can kind of explain it away as the cards have already been charged. It kind of whites out. Maybe the ink burns off or something. There is a split to the two fingers. You just place them however you want in there. But the other one is sculpted as two separate cards, and it took me a minute to realize that you gotta kinda put one between there and one between there and it's not the greatest fit I say as it <laughs> but then there's these two big huge card throwing effects and there is a lot of weight to these especially this one you see all this sculpted detail this all this flame that is just a solid hunk of plastic this one's a little lighter because it doesn't have all that detail on it one thing that caught my eye is that the cards are way bigger than the ones he holds in his hand that may be a perspective thing if you're taking pictures like this and the cards are coming at the camera, that works. And that is what this extra stand is for with this notch up on top. It holds the weight whenever you have them holding it or throwing it or doing whatever. Now to use these, you have to have these hands with the clear pegs installed in them because there is a peg hole at the very top and you can have that at any angle, throwing up, 
throwing to the side, throwing from the outside. With the lighter one, I was able to get him into a few poses without the stand holding it up. Either he's leaning backwards to counterbalance or put the other end of the effect in a sleeve or up on something. For head options in the package, he came with this stoic look. Then if he's in the middle of a fight or using his powers, he needs a gritting head too. And it's actually not as different as you would think. It's just essentially some teeth showing. And then of course that brings us to the coat. I don't think I have a lot of experience with cloth goods from Medicom. Maybe a cape here or there, but this is really, really nice. There is a thickness to the collar since it's doubled up and then sewn, but you get these epaulets up here with actual metal grommets or something. Extra strap around the sleeve that's very comic book accurate looking. Then there's wires running the whole top of the collar all the way down the front to the very, very bottom, and then running all the way around the bottom, which I usually don't care for because then you have to kind of sculpt the, the flow of the trench coat at the bottom. Oh, and there's also wires running into the split in the back. Put it back on, which is, you know, like putting a jacket on. My first instinct is to always pull the collar down, which you can do because of the wires. So if you don't care for that popped up collar look, you can also bring it down, which actually helps getting it out of the way of the hair flowing back. When you look up, the collar will push the head back forward. Well, if the collar's up like this, if you do this and then you're posing, that's just a simple matter of getting the wire <laughs> out of the way of the head and there you go. It doesn't get in the way of the articulation at the elbow or the shoulders and then you can just have it flowing out and doing whatever the hell you want. Gambit stands at about six and an eighth to the top of his head or where his head would be under that hair and then the hair goes up to about six and a half which works perfectly with the Mafex Wolverine and Cyclops. Oh we need more Mafex X-Men. Does run slightly shorter if you're wanting to fit him into your Marvel Legends display. That's how I picture the eyes. This all red it does work but that's more Gambit to me. But it does still work with other Marvel Legends figures. That actually works better than I thought it would. And maybe it's the head sizes that throw me off a little bit. Medicom does keep very Jim Lee-ish when <laughs> it's based on Jim Lee art. Because here's the Mafex, Hush, Superman, and Batman. So at the end of the day, I am impressed. I mean, look at that. No stand. It's just doing that itself. Okay, maybe I'm predisposed to like X-Men figures more than other offerings from any company. But really, I've been messing with this for far longer than I usually do during a review view. It's just a ton of fun. I keep trying new ways to pose him and use the effects and swap this out and switch this out and get the cape flowing over this way and where am I going to put the stand and how's this go here and that over there and ah! And I say that even though Gambit is not really high on my favorite X-Men list. But I'll be damned if a dynamic action figure doesn't win me over. Like I said during the review, this costume design, just everything about it should not work. How do you get through the 90s filter without some pouches? But it does work. Somehow it does. And then the trench coat on top of that and the hair flowing just adds so much to essentially a skin tight suit with a couple of details. And Medicom did a great job. When I first saw these big ass effects, I thought there's no way in hell I'm going to use those or that they're going to work. The, the arm's going to be loose or something. It's going to drag it down. But you can see it's still standing. It may not last all night into tomorrow, but right now it's doing what I want it to do. And that's all I can ask. If you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. I will say the chunkier effect isn't high on my list. I'm good with this one. You still have to work around weight and such but not near as much as you do here. I'm probably not gonna use the staff effects either just because I never think of that as getting charged or maybe he didn't do it a lot. I have this mental image that I like to stick to and it may be right, it may be wrong, but it makes me happy, you know?